So obviously, as you said, not that many cases are making it into the justice system, and the justice system has a, you know, is not done w right by the people who have made it through the system. So then that means that a lot of these situations, certainly if we're talking the world of work, have to be handled in the organizations themselves. So can you talk a little bit about, from, the, from your perspective, what it is that organizations should be doing clearly differently than they've been doing so far, given now everything that has been coming to light? Right. Well, I think um, the, uh, you, know, you, you can see a, a whole range of uh, places where some attention is needed. The, the universities, for example, high schools, uh, there was a story in the paper just today about some uh, high school teachers who had been found by the College of Teachers to have been offending in, and behaving unprofessionally vis-a-vis -vis students in a sexual harassment context. And they were just transferred over to another school, thank you very much. Doesn't it remind you of what happened to those bad priests? They're just whipped from one vestry to another and, uh, you know, in the end, when one of the cardinals in Boston had the police on his tail, the Pope whipped him over to be his private um, confessor in Rome. So this whole switching around and moving people. Um, Supposedly putting them, you know, so that people aren't in harm's way, but clearly not. Well, clearly not. And, I mean, that, that is just at a basic level that institutions and organizations have to stop their own misbehavior and own up to the fact that this happens and, and actually see to it that offenders are disciplined. But stepping back from that, you can't just run the system on a sort of a set of trials within the system. You do have to behave well and properly and ethically when some problem comes to light and not just transfer the offender. But you have to have some system written down and available to everyone that everybody knows about so that people know where they can complain about offensive conduct, what will happen to them when they complain, whether they will get support, um, what will happen, will there be an investigation or whatever. There has to be a clear chain in the organization of places where people can complain instead of just going to your supervisor um, the, uh, if the supervisor may have reasons of her or his own not to do anything or may have insufficient power to do it. So there has to be some really clear structure for reporting and investigation and for action to be taken, whether it's in a university or a hospital setting or a workplace setting. It's, it's really imperative and um, there have to be uh, protections uh, for uh, the accused person and also for the person who reports. And in a situation which is not the criminal justice system, but which some of us call private ordering, it's not, it's not the public system, it's, it's in-house, um, I think that it's quite within the organization's um, legal rights and responsibilities to have a system that more evenly balances the right of the complainant and the, and the rights of the people complained against. We don't have to leave the complainants hanging out there on a limb in order to satisfy the very elevated standard of proof beyond a reasonable doubt that the criminal law requires. This is a private investigation. The guy is not going to go to jail or the woman offender is not going to go to jail. There will be consequences, but you know, well designed such a system can give many more rights and protections to the complainants.